Welcome back to another Q&A video here on my YouTube channel. My name is Cody Miller. You guys are here because you love the sport of swimming, you follow me, you watch my vlogs, and you wanna get your question answered. And first off, how do you get your questions answered by me on one of my Q&A videos or in one of my weekly Wednesday vlogs? It's easy. Make sure you guys are following me on social media, at Swim Miller on Twitter and at Cody Miller on Instagram. Tweet me your question anytime or when I post a picture on Instagram specifically asking for questions, that's your best shot. And let's get started. And our first question today comes to us from Mary Ellen who asks, what is the best and worst thing to eat before practice? Okay, there's a lot of good things you can eat before practice, but the first thing that comes to my mind are the things not to eat, like fast food. I remember when I was in high school, I ate Taco Bell before an afternoon practice, and my coach Ron, at the time, gave me an 8,000 yard IM set. It was just an 8,000 IM, and it was like a pyramid, and I ate Taco Bell before that. It nearly killed me. So don't eat Taco Bell before practice. That's what I would say. Quinlan asks, were you bullied, and if you were, how did you deal with it? Ah, that's a really good question, too. Um, I was never like outright bullied, but I got made fun of a lot, particularly in middle school and like early years in high school, because I look weird, right? So like particularly in gym class, like I distinctively remember showing up for PE and taking off my shirt and changing. And because I've got this big hole in my chest and I look weird, number one, I was super self-conscious about it. And number two, a lot of people had never seen it before. And kids at that age, they don't really understand themselves. And some people just, you know, oftentimes people who are picking on people and people who are being, who are bullies are the people who are hurting the most. And um, I, I do remember a lot of people pointing and staring at me and kind of laughing at me, making fun of me. And so I, I was definitely really self-conscious about it. A lot of my insecurities came from myself. It wasn't necessarily pushed on me by other people, but that was a factor for a period of time. So I know what it's like to feel insecure and I do know what it's like to feel picked on because I was picked on a little bit. And over time, I just, I, I became, you know, more comfortable in my own skin and I just kind of got over it. Like I just caught over the fact that this isn't gonna change and there's really nothing wrong with me. And there's really nothing wrong with the way that you look, right? Um, this is a loaded, loaded question. Um, but understanding and loving yourself, like understanding who you are, loving yourself and being comfortable for who you are is the most important thing. And it's really just owning what you are, right? Like if you own your mistakes and you own your failures and you own everything about you, it takes the power away from everybody else because suddenly people can't make fun of you anymore, right? Like when I was young, I remember reading Harry Potter and although it's really popular and people like it, a lot of people think it's geeky and weird and you know they thought and and kids kind of make fun fun of me for that even then but now like i own it like look at this room like it's decked out in harry potter and there's a lot in it you know it's popular pop culture and there's a lot of people who like it but a lot of people think it's weird and stupid and childish and those people just don't understand it but i own it and that that suddenly takes the power away from all those people right like what they think just doesn't matter it does not matter like i, I think that i'm at the point now where life is just too short to worry about what other people think. I just don't care. And, and I've also definitely been a victim of like a little bit of social media abuse. Um, nothing like extreme, but you know, I've had a lot of people say a lot of really nasty things to me online. And you know, there have been points in time when it bothers me, but now I'm like, I'm realizing like, if you're one of those people, um, and if there's someone out there who is taking time out of their day to sit on their couch and suck as a person and just say negative things about other people trying to hurt other people, I just feel sorry for those people because those people aren't going anywhere. Those people aren't doing anything special. Those people aren't winning medals. And those people are probably the most unhappy of us all. And once I realized that, suddenly it just didn't matter. You know, it just, it just doesn't matter. Going off on a tangent here. Okay, next question. Mikey asks, favorite Christmas movie series song? Well, the first thing that comes to mind is the Home Alone movies. The first two Home Alone movies are probably my favorite Christmas movies. Um, I also really love The Grinch with Jim Carrey. Love that movie. And I saw the new Grinch movie, the animated one that's in theaters right now, and I actually quite like that one as well. Mark asks, do you ask yourself how you'd look with short hair? No, because for the majority of my life I had short hair and I know what I looked like with short hair. All through high school I had short hair. I, I had a buzzed head before I got to college. So I've got a lot of pictures with short hair and someday, I don't know if I'll ever cut my hair, I don't know, but mm, no. 
This question is very fitting. JT Chomps asks, if you were competing in the second task of the Triwizard Tournament, what underwater breathing method would you use? Second, if you were the one chained up at the bottom of the lake, who would you want to rescue you? Well, it wouldn't matter who rescued me. I would just want to be rescued if I was chained up at the bottom of the lake. As far as the spell goes, I wouldn't use the bubble head spell, which is what Floor used and what Cedric used. I would definitely use the shark head charm. I don't know the name of the spell off the top of my head, but no one's gonna mess with you if you have a shark head. Um, yeah, that's what I would go with. Loza Caroline asks, how many pop vinyls do you have now? Yeah, so in this room right now, we've got a lot of them up on the walls and stuff. Um, we have around 120 Harry Potter pops. Yeah, and they're not even all on display, but well over 100 and we're collecting more. There's new ones constantly coming out. They're like my favorite. It's like it's like a bonding thing for Allie and I to kind of to pre-order them and then go to the store and pick them up together. It's something we do for fun and we both really love them. So Nigel asks, how do I get a better breaststroke kick on land? So any kick on land to improve squats, box jumps, plyometrics, lots of explosive lower body exercises. And there's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of those, but the better you get at that at explosive springy things. One thing I really like are hurdle jumps. So you line up a bunch of hurdles and you spring like a rabbit, like pop, 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 stuff like that. There's a lot you can do. Emily asks, what electrolytes do you, do you use? I get this question a lot. That yellow drink I'm always drinking in my vlogs. Um, this is not a sponsored video or a plug or anything, but it's it's Endura by Metagenics, and it's essentially a really, really lean, healthy Gatorade. So everything in it's natural, you know, there's nothing unnatural in it. And it's also got, it's not just good sugars, but it's also got a lot of vitamins and magnesium, and things that help you retain your hydration levels. Tyler asks, how do you define success daily in practices, weights, and meats? So on a daily basis, the way I define success is when I can look at something after the fact and say that I maximized myself through the opportunity that was put forth to me. So for example, when Ray gives me a set, if after I've done the set, I can look at it and say, I did everything that I could to get the most out of that set, then that's a success. And sometimes that doesn't mean executing it 100% of the time the right way. Sometimes that doesn't mean going a best time in a set and practice or doing something better than I've ever done, done before because I'm kind of at the point now in my career where there's only a little bit of room to improve in certain areas and so I kind of have to find new ways of doing things and new ways of working through problems and pushing myself mentally through practices. So it's really all a matter of perspective when it comes down to it looking at success. And I think that as long as you're conscious of the fact that you're always trying and it's not always going to be perfect, then that's okay. I hope, I hope that kind of makes sense. I'm really not good at giving advice. Hello, it's Aiden asks, how do you continue to wake up at 5.30 in the morning and find it, I find it hard and could use some advice, what's your strategy? Quite simply, I've been doing it long enough, I'm just used to it. Um, it's 8.30 a.m. right now and I'm answering questions and I woke up at five this morning and swam already. Um, the best answer I can give is just go to bed early. Like I got, Puff, stop that, stop it, dang it. Go to bed early. Like I go to bed at 9 p.m. every night so that I'm asleep right around then. My dogs, I'm sorry. But if you get eight hours of sleep every night, then waking up in the morning that early becomes a habit and I don't feel tired. As long as, I find for me that as long as I get enough sleep, it doesn't matter if I'm waking up at five or if I'm waking up at eight. And maybe that just makes me crazy. Maybe that is not the case at all. I, I, I don't know. Lucas asks, is there a big difference between high school and college swimming? Yes, there is. There is a big difference. College swimming is like way more fun in my opinion. Maria asks, how did you get connected to IU and why did you choose IU? So I got connected to IU because my coach Ray, who you guys have seen in the vlogs, was friends with my club coach Ron. They actually swam against each other when they were a lot younger. And so that was kind of the connection. And at the time, when I was being recruited by IU, they were not the powerhouse program that we are now. Um, they were not even really a top 10 program in the country, but they had, at the time, the American record holder in the 50 meter breaststroke. His name is Kevin Swander. I think he's a coach now at 
um, Nebraska or no, 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 not sorry, not Nebraska. One of the Carolina schools. Anyway, but at the time they had a really, really good breaststroker, like an American record level breaststroker, and that attracted me to the program. I was like, okay, game on. Like that's it. Chris asks if you could have any form of superpower, what would it be and why? Okay, I have thought about this so much. It's painful to me to know that it will never really be true and it'll never actually happen. But if I could have any superpower, it would be teleportation. Believe me, I've thought about this a lot. I would want the power of teleportation. Flight would be cool, but we don't, That this video is gonna go way too long if I get into that. Evan asks, do you have any advice for someone going to the Big Ten swimming next year? And I just clicked on your profile, looks like you're going to Iowa. Cool, if you are going to Iowa, if that's correct, that pool is legit. I love that pool. I won Big Ten championships in that pool. Yeah, my piece of advice, don't put too much pressure on yourself. You know, take it step by step. And um, transitioning into college swimming is tough. I mean, balancing, I get those kinds of questions all the time. How do you balance schoolwork with swimming, this and that, and there's, and I'm not good at giving that advice because it's different for everyone. And that's why I don't ever really answer those questions. But don't put too much pressure on yourself. For me, I would say make sure you get enough sleep and that's hard because when you go into college, you have all this studying that is put on you and then you also have to wake up early for practices and stuff. So there's this crazy juggling act. And I don't really have like one piece of advice that can just solve everyone's problems, but you know, I would say get enough sleep, don't overthink it, take it step by step. Coach Polano asks, what's something weird that you've done that you'd recommend be on everyone's bucket list? Ooh, that's a really good question. I don't know off the top of my head. This is not the answer to your question, but I do think one thing that everyone should do is as a swimmer, I think everyone should experience a little bit of every type of training. So what I mean by that is if you're a hardcore distance swimmer, I think you should try some sprint training. I think if you're a sprinter, I think you should try some distance training. I think you should do a little bit of everything, not all the time, but everyone should at least experience that each time just to have a greater understanding of swimming, of you know being more appreciative of what they do, understanding themselves a little bit better. But something that should be on their bucket list, I'm gonna have to give that some thought. That is a really good question. Okay, and that's a wrap on today's Q&A video. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for sending in questions. Keep sending them in. I promise I'll do better to do more of these Q&A videos in the future. Make sure you guys are following me on social media, at Swim Miller on Twitter and at Cody Miller on Instagram. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Subscribe to my podcast. I've got a new podcast up. Blake and I just did one. Go get that on iTunes, Spotify, the Google Play Store. It's up on YouTube. Um, subscribe to that. Vlogs every Wednesday. And until next time, I will see you you guys later.